Hi everyone, I'm Mad Hildebrandt and this is the Get Mad Show. Today our guest is Representative Matthew McQueen. He is the sitting representative for New Mexico's State House District 50 and he's running for re-election. Let's go. So we have Representative Matthew McQueen here. Thank you so much for showing up on this show and, and coming to speak directly to, to your constituents today. So thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So what is really important for our viewers and for the, for the public is to know who you are as a person. So I'd like you to take a minute and just really just, just tell people who you are. Let them know who you are not as a politician. <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, biographically, um, I'm an attorney. I've been an attorney for over 25 years now. <clears throat> uh, I'm in my uh, third term, running for my fourth term, uh, 52 years old. Uh, I got married later in life. And so I have little kids. Uh, I have a three-year-old named Kate and a six-year-old named Jack. Um, you know, I live in the, the village of Galisteo, which is at a really beautiful spot. Uh, when the virus hit, you know, we're spending a lot more time at home. So we adopted two little kittens, which has been great. Um, and I, <clears throat> I'm happy that we have two because they spend an awful lot of time playing with each other. Uh, and that was sort of also my theory about having kids. There was some convincing my wife that, that we should have a second, uh, second child, uh, but that's worked out great. Um, you know, I, I'm not a natural politician, never really wanted to be in politics, <clears throat> was always just active in my community, um, doing environmental work or nonprofit work. Uh, and that <clears throat> just sort of led to running for State House when the seat was, you know, the seat was sort of open. Um, my predecessor passed away in office mm. and the then governor appointed uh, some uh, Republican to the seat and I ran against her. Yeah, and that's, you know, and that's, that's often what happens, you know, when, when a seat comes open, and it's, you know, it's sad, but mm -hmm. sometimes that's what happens, that one of us steps forward into, you know, feeling, you know, from inside, and, it, you know, you have heartfelt reasons, you have your own reasons that propelled you forward to do this, and, and you've been doing it successfully now for, for a number of years. And, and, and Stephen easily my predecessor was, you know, was a great guy and I got to know him and I thought maybe when he was ready to retire, you know, maybe I'd run then. And mm -hmm. I really, wasn't really a good time in my life. You know, I just got married, we had a baby on the way. Right. And you know, it's just, I guess I don't get to control that. I don't get to choose. Oh, right. Right. And sometimes that is the way it is. Um, so it, I, you know, it, we're, we're in a pandemic and I know that so many of us are at home it, right now and um, as you said your kids are home you guys are you know all at the house together and so um, what's happening right now with this pandemic um, it is causing a lot of issues for our health care system throughout New Mexico and in your district and so can you can you um, speak for a minute about um, about how this is impacting you and your district and, um, and, and the state and what, you know, and just what you think we, needs to be done or, you know, just your ideas on the idea of healthcare uh, right now. So I have, a, I have a largely rural district and healthcare has always been an issue. And the, one of the biggest parts of the, the healthcare um, issue, you know, puzzle is, is access. You know, so I represent portions of four different counties and just being able to get to see a doctor um, can be a challenge. And we, uh, the community of Edgewood has done a really good job building a new health center there uh, with state help. And that's good. And that's going to draw from a lot of different communities. Uh, in the pandemic, you know, again, we're, we're seeing the importance of, of health insurance. I think we've done a very good job of flattening the curve. So there hasn't been the, the crush at the hospitals, which was the fear. I think that's very good news. Um, but you know, health insurance will continue to be, to be important. Access to health care will continue to be important. And, and one thing actually my predecessor, Stephen Easley was very, very big on was telemedicine. 
well, telemedicine is great and all that much more important now, but people still have to have access to broadband to make that happen. Right. So, you know, this digital divide comes up in the pandemic too. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I also live in a rural area and we have those same problems and so much of New Mexico does. And that's why, you know, when we watch and see who's getting elected into different districts, it's so important to kind of understand the dynamics of the entire state, that broadband is affecting so much of us and, and rural health care is a problem for so many of us. And it's, you know, and I really appreciate that those are important things for you. Um, when we're talking about broadband and internet access and you have children of your own, <clears throat> so I know education is important to you. And so this is kind of a, my little segue into, <laughs> into education is the fact that, you know, that, that broadband is also a problem for all of us. And we're at trying to educate our children at home. And so, so many people are suddenly having hands on. And the education system, I think, is going to be more important this time around for, because people are, are having more, you know, um, primary um, experience with it. So talk about um, your plans for fixing or working with the education system in New Mexico. So I, um, as we said, my, my kids are young. So, so one is in kindergarten, or at least he would be if school was in session. And I feel, you know, personally, um, I feel fortunate you know, having a three-year-old and a six-year-old, I don't think this is as disruptive as, say, having a middle school student, you know, to the, to the flow of the learning. And we're still doing schoolwork with Jack at home. Um, he has an iPad. <clears throat> um, he's in the Santa Fe School District because I live in Santa Fe County, even though I represent four counties. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a few years back, they did a, a technology bond initiative. And so each student has an iPad. And that's great. You know, and that's been that's been um, a good way for him to keep up with his, uh, you know, his interaction with with learning uh, and, and the skills that that he has developed. So we need to keep working on that. We you know we really need to make sure that every student has that access. So whether we're in a pandemic or not, you know, that broadband access, that that digital connection, is really important to learning. It's important to business. It's important to, to communication. I mean, that's something we, we need throughout the state. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It really is. And, um, and you know, and I see that people are working on it and people like you. And it, that's a good thing to see that people, you know, that, that someone like you who's already has a seat in, in uh, your district and, you know, in, in the New Mexico house is, um, you know, is looking forward and not looking backwards. And that's a really, a really good thing. Thank you for that, for all of that, you know, thinking of, of the children. Um, Having kids um, underscores that, you know, I'd like to think I was always sort of forward looking, but yeah, it's different with kids. Oh yeah. Yeah, it absolutely is. And I think that it, that, as I said, the viewers are going to be seeing this a little bit differently than they did when their children were at school, you know, just a few weeks ago. <clears throat> um, I know that another, topic that is near and dear to your heart as it is to mine and to so many of my viewers is the environment and I know here in New Mexico we're so um, dependent upon oil revenues and we're seeing right now with the problems that are coming out of the Middle East and Russia over oil that the the market has dropped and the, the money is really non-existent and that is beginning to affect us. And that, so, um, you know, uh, this is maybe the time that we can start really, really focusing on, on that shift to renewables. And I know that that's an area that is also important to you. So can you speak a little bit to that? So I'm um, in, uh, environment and conservation. That's my background. So, you know, I, it was my major. I have a master's in natural resources. I mean, that was always sort of my passion. Uh, I'm chair of the House Energy, Environment, and Natural Resources Committee, so I've been working on the renewable piece uh, since I got to the legislature. And I think that's really important. We have, we have incredible renewable resources here in New Mexico that we need to develop. And absolutely, we've been over-reliant on that oil and gas money. In the past couple of years, it was really flowing in, and it's going to go away. I mean, 
I, we've got to transition away from that, being so reliant on that in our economy. I thought we would have five to 10 years for that transition, and we don't. You know, it just, it really came crashing down. <clears throat> it not only impacts the money we would get from oil and gas, but it impacts everything else. Our gross receipts taxes will be down, our income taxes will be down. The, the budget's gonna take a big hit, and it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be painful. Yeah, it, it is going to be difficult. And, and, I, and, and, you know, there is the upside for those of us who are environmental minded is that this is the time. This is the time. It's, it's come upon us to, to really start focusing on, on those renewables. And, you know, you're in a good, a good position to be a person that's leading us towards that. Yeah, um, and I, I mean, I would say we, we have been focusing on the renewables, but we, we still have to diversify the economy because the renewables, the economic impact doesn't replace the, the oil and gas economic impact. Oh, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so uh, the next thing that I want to shift to really quick, and this one that don't get to have a nice easy segue into, is, um, is uh, ethics, government ethics. And I know this is another topic that is near and dear to your heart that you actually um, led in some, in uh, like the Public Corruption Act. And I would like you to take another minute here and really talk about that because I know we're looking at, you know, the problems that we're seeing, the possible problems, because of course they aren't, they aren't proven, but the idea that people up in the national offices are, um, you know, are dumping stocks and buying other stocks based on, um, information that's that, that only they know and we know that the me too movement has has brought a lot of stuff out that people didn't realize was there so there's a lot of ethics issues that um that government officials really need to be aware of and be held accountable for and i know that that's one of those things that you're interested in so if we could just spend a minute there so this is just you know i, I believe we need to do a better job at government at, at being government officials uh, so the Public Corruption Act would take away the public pension of officials who are convicted of a felony, you know, whether it's embezzlement or perjury or whatever, they would lose that public pension. Um, and the idea there is, you know, if they violate the public trust, they should be off the public payroll. Sorry about that. I don't even know how to shut that off. Um, so there's that. Uh, I've worked on campaign finance reform. I've worked on transparency. You know, we have this capital outlay system that, that a lot of people criticize. And one of the criticisms is that individual legislators can make allocations and keep their allocations secret. Mm. That should just be disclosed. I mean, that's just sort of a no-brainer. Uh, I think the Secretary of State's office in particular should be a publicly financed campaign because the Secretary of State is the you know chief enforcement of campaign finance laws. So asking her to serve that enforcement role and also be a part of that system, that just, that seems like a bad idea to me. So I've, I've run a number of ethics and transparency bills and I will continue to do so. Yeah, and that, that is really awesome because, you know, so, you know, so many of the issues that we see coming up, you know, um, over and over and over again have to do with ethics and just people just pushing the edge of that envelope. And, uh, and, and it's really um, um, commendable that you have taken the lead in this area. And I, I appreciate that. Thank you. So now we're at the end. So um, I really want to thank you again for having been here. Um, I'm going to give you another minute. And during that minute, I want you to actually address directly to the voters in your district um, why they should be voting for you and giving you another chance. So, as I said, I, I'm in my sixth year, my third term, my sixth year in the legislature. And to me, being in the legislature is, is public service. Uh, it's a lot of hard work. It takes me away from my job. It takes me away from my family. It's an unpaid position, but it's, it's consistent with the you know, sort of the volunteer nonprofit community board time that I, that I used to put in. Um, I, I used to say that I spent my first four years on defense. 
in the legislature under Governor Martinez. Uh, and we even, the Republicans were in control of the House for my first two years. Last two years have been very different. And I've been uh, very happy about having Governor Lujan Grisham. Uh, but everything just changed. You know, it's, it, we're, I think we're in for a rough ride in New Mexico. And I think hard, hard work is gonna count. And I think experience is gonna count. So I, you know, I don't feel like I'm, I've reached the natural end of my public service, and I would like to continue serving. Uh, I've worked very hard to represent the entire district, not just some subset of the district. Uh, and I've been doing, I think I've been doing a good job. I'd like to keep, keep that going. Great. And uh, I, uh, can you tell us really fast your, um, your website so that people can reach information about you? and so that they can um, donate to your campaign? So my website is mcqueen4nm.com, mcqueen, F-O-R-N-M, as in New Mexico.com. And there's, there's a way to contact me through the website and you can donate and there's some policy positions and stuff like that too. Okay, great. And we'll put that down below in the comments so everybody will be able to get to that. Okay. And so that you can look up more information about uh, about your current sitting representative, Matthew McQueen. And um, thank you again for being here. And uh, thank you, everybody out there for watching the show and for being here. And make sure you check on um, Mr. McQueen, Representative McQueen, and learn more about him. Thank you. Thank you.